I'm Jeff Shacknitis. I work in services engineering, supporting our airline customers. I've been with GE about 10 years now. I'm originally from Massachusetts, where my dad actually worked at GE and Lynn. He started just a couple months before I was born and recently retired after 30 years with the company. And his dad was actually an engineer too, so I can guess you could say the profession runs in our family. But when I was 12, his job took our family to Cincinnati. I eventually attended The Ohio State University. I graduated in 2012 and I got my degree in mechanical engineering. I think I was always in awe of the work that my dad did, so not surprised I was drawn into GE. So after I graduated, I started on the Edison program in Cincinnati. And then in 2015, I moved up to Chicago to be a field service engineer supporting United. And along the way, I met my amazing wife, Becky. We've been married two years now, and we're parents. We have a three-month-old son named Theo. Around the time I moved to Chicago, I got really interested in politics and environmental issues like climate change and global warming. And having read and learned about these issues for years now, climate change is just something I think about every day. You know, it's constantly on my mind. It factors into my daily decision making. I've really come to believe this is an existential problem and we've got to solve it. So here's the problem I was wrestling with. I was feeling like the work I was doing at GE it wasn't giving me that sense of purpose that I need. I wasn't feeling like I was bringing my full self to work every day. So I started to think, what is it at GE that I can do? Because GE plays this huge role in the energy transition. We're a vitally important company. And I started to think even more specifically, if I could help United Airlines cut just 0.1% of CO2 emissions from their 737 fleet alone, that's a huge impact. In 2020, these dots really started to connect for me. That summer, me and more than 800 other GE employees signed a letter to Larry Culp, urging GE to take stronger action on climate change. And this eventually led to my involvement in the GE Green Team and eventually the Sustainability Working Group in Aviation. And through this, I got more familiar with these major levers of decarbonization in the industry and then what GE specifically was doing about it. I started to notice Sustainability was becoming top of mind for our customers, but we weren't out there engaging them on this. So my customer, United, had recently made several big investments in the sustainability space. So for our next executive review with them, I got sustainability put on the agenda. I only got two minutes, so I had time for one slide. I delivered this simple message. It was, let's start a conversation. Let's talk about how we can work together and collaborate to solve the world's biggest problems. They were excited, and unsurprisingly, the first topic they wanted to talk about was sustainable aviation fuel, or SAF. We had a follow-up meeting, and they actually offered us an aircraft to do flight testing. So we kicked off this project to do a 100% SAF flight. We started with just a few people from GE and United, and eventually had more than 50 people, eight companies, with eight months of work and thousands of man hours. And we accomplished this historic first for the industry. So on December 1st, 2021, a United 737 MAX flew the first ever passenger flight using 100% SAF. So we flew from Chicago to Washington, D.C. We had 115 people on board, including myself, our own John Slattery, and dozens of other industry leaders. So when we landed in D.C., we had this huge reception, not just to celebrate and congratulate ourselves, but really to acknowledge the challenges that our industry is facing to decarbonize. And you know, having led this for months, the experience that day was, was surreal. So I remember looking around and everyone was talking to each other and just really engaged in the day. You know, no one was on their phones, checking email. You could tell like, everyone was excited to be there just to experience this moment in aviation history. So for me, that's a memory that I'll have forever because that's a day I brought my full self to work. So let me leave you with a few thoughts. First, at GE, you know, we have this opportunity to truly lead the industry. And it's not just in propulsion technology. We can be an aggregator. We can be that entity that brings people and ideas together to solve the biggest problems. This collaboration is crucial. Right? Working together is how we'll deliver for the greater good. And second, as an individual, if you're passionate about something at GE, you, know, you owe it to yourself to go after it. You've got to go make that change happen because no one else is going to do it for you. you know, for me, I felt personally empowered to go drive this project to the point of no return before we had to go ask for funding. And you know that wasn't easy. 
And we faced roadblocks along the way. We encountered resistance from the business. We had to convince a lot of people that this was worth our while. But in the end, man, am I glad we did it. I wouldn't have it any other way. The future of flight is going to be written through these next three decades of innovation as we tackle the challenge of getting to net zero emissions. That is our noble cause. So in 2050, when we hit that goal, my son will be 28. And I want to be able to tell him that I did everything in my power to make the world a better place for him and his kids. That is my purpose.